Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from University of Pennsylvania, and I'm going to talk about the Grouper API Part 1. I'll talk about the overview of the Grouper API, versioning, how to download it, which databases are supported, um, the loader, DDL, which is database definition language, and quick start data. In the Grouper architecture diagram, the API is right in the middle. It's used by um, the web services, the um, user interfaces, the grouper loader, provisioning, etc. And then the grouper loader talks to external systems of record via SQL or JNBI, LDAP, um, to sync um, groups inside of grouper. So the grouper registry is what we call the database tables where the grouper data lives. And the API is the grouper jar and the dependent jars um, that manipulate the grouper registry. The grouper API is a dependent component for the UI, web service, loader, provisioning, etc. The grouper API can run in multiple places against the same registry. Um, for instance, you could have a UI deployment um, that's different than a web service deployment, and they both talk to the same database. Or you could have load balanced um, UI multiple UIs load balanced um, that talk to the same database. And there's a grouper Java API, which um, is inside the grouper jar, which is also referred to as the grouper API. Um, so it has two, two definitions. The versioning for grouper is a three number system, for instance 2.0.3, where two is the major version, zero is the minor version, and three is the build number. And we're only going to put um, bug fixes and small impact enhancements in the next build number of a release. Um, and then if there are major enhancements, that'll go in the next major or minor release. Generally, we have a substantial release, which is a new major or minor number, about yearly. All components of group are released at the same time with the same version number, web services, UI, etc. However, the PSP provisioning service provider um, is not directly tied to the grouper release schedule, so it might not be the same. If you're upgrading grouper, it's generally a good idea to upgrade all the components together. And for a major minor release, if you want to upgrade, there are instructions on the wiki and a list of environment changes, which are which jars change or which config files. Grouper web services are versioned, and each request to the web service sends the version number to the server so it knows which protocol to use. And that makes Grouper Web Services backwards compatible. So clients do not need to be upgraded when the server is upgraded. They would only need to be upgraded if they need to take advantage of new functionality. To download Grouper, there's a link on the web server that has all the packages. If you download the Grouper installer jar, it can download all the packages for you, and or most of them, and install them for you. And some grouper packages are hosted on Maven Central Repository. Here is a screenshot of the um, web page that has all the download links. You can right click on any of those links and download the tarballs. For databases, grouper uses the open source Hibernate library for Java to SQL persistence. Generally, grouper supports databases that Hibernate supports, although it does need um, transactions, large indexes, and complex SQL queries. Um, however, it's best if you use Oracle, MySQL, or Postgres. So Grouper is tested with SQL Server, though some things can be problematic, including indexes. <coughs> and it's unsupported to use um, any other database except HQL in development. Um, you shouldn't use HQL in, uh, in production. Grouper Loader can keep groups in sync with SQL databases or LDAP, and the Grouper Loader SQL part is compatible with any SQL database that you have a Java driver for, because it doesn't use Hibernate or anything else, just as a, a simple SQL query. It's a good idea to keep your loader query in a database view, if your database supports view, so that you can maintain that view um, without having to change the configuration of the Grouper Loader job. Here's an example of the Grouper Hibernate properties, which tells Grouper which database to point to. There's a URL, a username, and a password are generally the only things you need to change, and the driver will be detected from the URL. 
DDL is Data Definition Language. This is the SQL that creates database objects, tables, views, indexes used by Grouper. DDL is not standard across database vendors. And Hibernate does some DDL, but it's not really good enough for what we need. So we use Jakarta DDL utils to generate DDL for each database vendor. You can run a GSH command. GSH is Grouper's command line utility to initialize or upgrade the DDL in your database. And Grouper will analyze the database to upgrade it. Follow the Grouper upgrade instructions carefully, um, step by step, to make sure that um, everything is done the way that we've tested it. So you can use GSH to either init or upgrade the registry for you, or it can generate a script that you can review. Generally in production you might want to do that just to look at it and, and eyeball it to see if anything looks weird. Um, the grouper gsh ddl command can also run um, SQL, you know, update statements or insert statements, um, whatever it needs to do to the database to upgrade it. So it's not just ddl, but it could be regular SQL too. Here's an example of initializing the registry with GSH. And when it's done, it'll say table object structure DDL is up to date. So there are quick start users in um, a SQL file, and there's an export of a quick start project that you can import to have sample groups, folders, memberships, etc. And the grouper installer or GSH can install those quick start users and data for you. The quick start users need to be resolvable before the quick start data can be loaded, um, so you need to do the users first. Here's an example of running the user's SQL file, and when it's done, it'll say script was executed successfully. And here's an example of importing the quick start data, which is all the groups and memberships. And when you're done, you can pull up the UI, and you'll see quick start University of Bristol with a bunch of sample folders and groups and memberships with those sample members, quick start members in them. Click on the link in the YouTube description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic, and thanks a lot.